Welcome everybody present to this hearing on the 179th period of session. The name of the session is the impact of the colonization of the ter indigenous territories in the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. And the idea is to provide updated information on the violation against the rights of Miski to Amayana peoples and against the human rights in the Nicaraguan region, in the coast region of Nicaragua. It was requested by the civil society organizations. They are present. And I would also like to welcome the state representative of Nicaragua. I, I think it's really important for the state to be present. So I really thank the presence of the state representation because lately we have not had the presence of the state and I think it's a very good space to dialogue and I think it's really important for the state to be present so I would like to welcome the state. Today I am uh, Antonio Rajola, reporter for Nicaragua and for the Indigenous People Commission re a reportership. I'm also joined by the first vice president, Julissa Mantilla, and the second vice president, Flavia Piavesan. We have a board of women and the former president of the commission and rapporteur of uh, human rights, Joel Hernandez. We also have the executive secretary, the acting executive secretary present, Maria Claudia Pulido, the rapporteur of uh, ESCR Soledad Garcia right, wrote me today. She had a personal issue and she won't join us, but I think uh, her spirit will be present today. I would like to welcome the civil society organizations and the state representation. The hearing for those who have not been here has a specified format. We will give the floor for 20 minutes to the civil society organizations. We have a timer here. You have the drawing of a clock, which will run the time. Please use time wisely. I try to let you know when the time is running up, but sometimes I cannot interrupt you beforehand. We also had interpretation. We also have subtitle interpretation and interpretation, audio interpretation into English for those who do not speak Spanish because I think that there are other organizations that are going to speak in English, so we will have interpretation into Spanish as well. After the 20 minutes assigned for each of the parties, the commission has 20 minutes to ask questions and make comments, and then the civil society have a right to comment during 12 minutes, then the state during 12 minutes, and then the closure of the commission. We will ask the people present to um, mute their microphones when they are not um, using the, the floor. And I, I would like to greet an important group, which is MSNE group, which is here with us and is always monitoring. I see they are all present and I would like to greet them. Especially, I would like to give the floor to the civil society. I would like you to present yourself once you 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 start speaking good afternoon the team of the meseni of the commission my name is guillermo rodriguez and i am representing the organizations for the my name is Guillermo Rodriguez from the CEGIL in the representation of the organizations. I am here with Lottie Cunningham, Ana Molano, and Maria Luisa Costa. We are here with Mr. Juan Carlos Ocampo, who is a member of the Miskitu community of Putku and beneficiary of the protection measure of the Inter-American system. We would like to thank you for the space you are giving us to deepen the crisis that the original people face on the part of non-indigenous third parties within the framework of destructive activities fostered by the state of Nicaragua. Without further ado, I will give the floor to Lottie Cunningham. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Mrs. President. In the 21st century, the indigenous people of the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua keep on facing the colonization of our territories, leaving our peoples at the verge of ethnocide. Since the law number 445 of the communal regime property came into, came into force, we demarcated and titled 23 indigenous territories in the Caribbean coast. We still have to, we need the sanitation of the territories, which, need, which means a relocation of non-indigenous third parties outside the indigenous properties, which prevents the communities from accessing use and enjoying the, their lands and natural goods. And the colonists who do not know the customs and the traditions of the indigenous peoples in the territories, sometimes they are armed and they overexploit their natural goods. All throughout 2020, we can count over 13 murders, eight people were attacked to kidnappings and the forced displacements of a whole community. Most of the members of the Mayangna peoples. But we also registered multiple attacks which were addressed to the Miskito people. Among them, we can register aggressions against two indigenous girls. Between 2011 and 2021, we could count 49 indigenous Miskitos people dead, 53 injured, 45 were kidnapped, and four people disappeared. We estimate that violence has displaced approximately 1,000 Miskito people only in 12 communities which are beneficiaries of the protection measures of the inter-American system. The impunity due to this violent act is practically absolute. The state has not provided periodical information or, or updated about the number or the state of the investigation of the murders and the aggressions which, to which we refer. And it has not implemented provisional and precautionary measures granted by this commission or the Inter-American Court on Human Rights to 12 indigenous communities, Miskito indigenous communities, which reiterate the need to carry out the territory sanitation. I will give the floor to my colleague, Clara Galeano. Thank you. Apart from the violence to the defend to the advocate communities, those who defend the indigenous rights are victims of multiple attacks, among them aggressions, online harassings, and administrative bureaucratic barriers for their free association. Marcela Inés Posta Simón, indigenous advocate, was aggressed, uh, was attacked on June 26, 2019, when she was involved in a peaceful demonstration. They, she, they broke the, her arm and she lost sight in one of the eyes. One of the aggressors is a worker for the city of Bilwe and they are still free and their acts of stigmatization and threats. We can also underscore the digital harassment against their members and collaborators. We are warned about the fact that the cybercrime law defines criminal types which are so ambiguous for these practices and this creates a new tool to, uh, to some submit to crimes people who defend human rights. Finally, uh, after the approval of the ex for foreign agents law in October 2020, the publication of the norm in January 2021 were formalized administrative and bureaucratic barriers which the government has imposed several months ago. 
in spite of having handed the documentation which was requested in 10 occasions, we can remember that the excess of administrative requirements is used to hinder the defense work of the organi organizations. Finally, we would like to say that the state has not complied with its ob obligation to create the protection and protocol investigation measures for cases of uh, risk situations, threats and aggressions against people which uh, were advocates and were ordered by Inter-American Court 2017. I will give the floor to my colleague Maria Luisa Costa. Thank you. The state of Nicaragua has the obligation to respect, protect, and warranty human rights and the fundamental freedoms of all people within their jurisdiction without discrimination. And it has to take the measures needed to prevent and remediate the violations to these rights. This obligation includes armed groups and private companies serious violations to human rights are crimes that because of their seriousness they uh, attempt against the dignity of the human being and they constitute international crimes and they are defined and as crimes against humanity, such as forced displacement, extermination, and genocide. The American Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People in its Article 11 establishes the Indigenous peoples have the right to not, not to be subject to genocide or uh, attempt to exterminate them. And Article 16 of the Convention of 169 of the ILO establishes that the forced displacement constitutes a violation of the protection, international protection of human rights of these peoples. And the Rome Statute in its Article 7 describes the crimes against humanity as any of these acts when they are committed as part of a genocide generalized or systematic attack against the civil population, which knows that attacked, murder, extermination, forced displacement of the population, torture, violation, forced disappearance of people, prosecution of persecution of a group or collectivity with identity funded on political, racial, ethnical, national, cultural, or religious motives. The systematic attacks which have been worsened since September to date were perpetrated by non-indigenous colonists armed with weapons against Miskitu and Mayagna communities, peoples with identity, have generated the loss to the access to the re natural resources, which are essential for the subsistence of land livelihood of these peoples. The violence and the um, um, displacement has bring the forced displacement of these people, and it has been done under a poly political of colonization against these ancestral people. This extermination crime is described as the intentional imposition of the life conditions, such as the, such as the elimination of the access to goods or medicines. And they have been also deprived from the access to natural goods, such as water, food, medicinal plants, etc. According to Section 6, the Rome Statutes, this uh, genocide crime, in order to be perpetrated, requires the intention to totally or partially distract a national or ethnical or racial or religious group. And the intention to distract it can be inferred from the, um, from the injuries to physical integrity and mental integrity of the members of these indigenous communities. I will give the floor to my colleague, Anura Mital. Which addresses the interests of cattle ranching, gold mining, and forestry drive the colonization of the Caribbean coast, plus the Nicaraguan state's complicity, which has failed to consult and seek consent from the indigenous and Afro-descendant peoples as required under the law. 
Even more, the state is involved in each of these sectors, including through its investment promotion agency, Pro Nicaragua, its quadrennial human development plan, and through the direct involvement of state and parastatal companies. Nicaragua has the largest cattle raising industry in Central America. Cattle ranching has proliferated under the current government in line with its development strategy to expand Nicaraguan beef exports. The autonomous regions are the departments with the highest concentration of cattle and where most expansion is happening. Although the herd size within communal territories is unknown, communities in the region report that their lands have been taken for pastures for cattle, often through violence or threats of violence. In other cases, lands previously seized by settlers are illegally sold to cattle ranchers. The state has endorsed cattle ranching in autonomous territories through acts of omission. Civil society organizations and indigenous and Afro-descendant authorities have documented the presence of cattle with ear tags in communal lands, meaning they're registered with Nicaraguan state agencies for traceability. Given the existing failures in the traceability program, it is impossible for beef exporters to ensure that the cattle from the slaughterhouses were raised outside of communal lands. Gold mining activities, both exploration and active mining have grown under the Ortega government, with gold one of the top three exports in recent years. Pro Nicaragua publicizes that approximately 60% of Nicaragua's landmass is open to mining concessions and mining companies are incentivized through tax exemptions. According to Nicaraguan law, private concessions can only be granted in association with the state mining company, Enimenas, formed in 2017. In the months after Enimenas was formed, the amount of land under mining concessions more than doubled, with nearly a third falling in the buffer zone of the Bursafas Biosphere Reserve. Since then, Caliber Mining and Rio Tinto have joined, uh, jointly applied for mining concessions, totaling 12.8% of the Nicaraguan landmass. Many of the active legal mines are adjacent to indigenous and Afro-descendant territories, and much of the land under exploratory concessions is within those territories. Hemco's 1994 gold mining concession is an example of the quick expansion of mining activities. After at least six ownership changes since 1994, the concession is now owned by Colombia's Grupo Mineros and has ballooned from the original 12,400 hectares to 198,000 hectares without the requisite consultation and consent processes. The existence of exploratory concessions in communal territories also advances colonization by luring small-scale miners to the territories in search for gold, leading to the attacks on indigenous communities. Canada-based Caliber Mining reported that it collaborates directly with small-scale miners in exploration programs. Mills owned by Grupo Mineros and Nicaragua Milling Company, among others, have no known controls to prevent the purchase of ore from small-scale miners operating illegally within communal lands. Forestry operations in Nicaragua have often targeted indigenous and Afro-descendant territories and adjacent areas. The Oakland Institute obtained documents in which senior regional and national government officials approved illicit land sales and logging permits within communal lands. Forestry exploitation in these territories typically escalates in response to hurricanes striking the Caribbean coast. Amid the devastation of Hurricane Felix in 2007, the current government permitted the parastatal company Alba Forestal run by members of the Ortega family to extract lumber from communal lands without the requisite approval. The destruction of hurricanes Eta and Iota in 2020 raises the prospect of similar activities. Forestry company MLR Forestal has links with mining companies engaged in harmful practices in Nicaragua and beyond. Spun from Hemco in 2012, it remains under the ownership of critical figures in Nicaragua's mining sector. These mining projects benefit from the financing of MLR Forestal, including $20 million received from development finance institutions, FinFund and the Dutch FMO. Finally, the state has promoted private interest and political control in indigenous and Afro-descendant territories by installing parallel communal and territorial governments. While refusing to recognize elected communal and territorial authorities perceived to oppose the ruling party and its projects, state authorities have recognized others aligned with their interests without any election or after a sham election. These parallel governments obtain access to state resources in return for the authorization of state-supported projects. I yield the floor to Juan Carlos Ocampo. Yo soy Juan Carlos 
I am Juan Carlos. I'm uh, belong to the Mesquita uh, community of Vutco. I would like to talk about the situation we are living in our uh, territories. My community belongs to the Sibba that uh, gathers five communities. We have gathered since 2009 to take care of our forest against external threats. However, uh, we have suffered the colonization of our territories with the support of communal and territorial authorities. Towards 2007, several judges authorized the entry of 30 families of colonies to an area of 1,500 hectares of land, which is located uh, and this was done without the previous consent of the uh, Sibba Assembly after destroying these authorities and denouncing them before the state of Nicaragua on December the 15th in 2017. After an assembly, the Sibba communities decided not to support, not to provide our support, and we ratify again our decision of not allowing the rent of our lands to any colonies. However, we know that. Uh, the groups of colonies continue to enter without any authorization. We know that this happened in 2018, and the same happens in 2019. It's important to remember that the Commission granted precautionary measure in its resolution 60 of 2018 after the death rent, uh, threats that we received from colonies and paramilitary. We have identified the exchange under threat of its lands uh, instead of bunny and forces between indigenous peoples and colonists. For example, uh, one of the families of colonists started to measure 200 blocks on uh, farming areas of 15 families from San Miyala. On September the 10th, uh, they were intimate, uh, these fam uh, member family or members of this family intimidated and threatened one of the pastors and the community that were harvesting the rice. Also, we see some attacks in some farming lands. They also uh, burn five houses where um, rice harvest was kept. And they also kidnap uh, the community members, Manuel Salvador Hernandez Gonzalez and Felix Chaser Labonte Rojas. They were hit during seven Ours. The armed colonists uh, blame them for the murder of one of their members in order to justify what they were doing and the attack that they were doing to the communi community property. Even though none of the colonies has been, the, uh, even though one of the colonies was detained, their family members and their uh, uh, those who live there have been harassing the community members, destroying their farm crops, and also uh, destroying coconut trees. We saw also attacks against our crops. And also we see that this has been worsened by the hurricanes ATA and IOTA and the absence of food security and productive rehabilitation uh, by the government of Nicaragua. I would like to give the floor now to Ana Bolavios. Because of the seriousness of what has been in, uh, mentioned, we request the commission to request the state of Nicaragua to stop any threats and attacks against people and uh, human rights defenders and also that the state is no longer carrying out retaliation against the persons that are in this hearing. We want them to carry out a comprehensive investigations uh, regarding the facts that we're uh, reporting this hearing and with reparations for the victims to implement urgently and immediately the precautionary measures and the provisional measures granted to the beneficiary in the Chinese communities to inform about the plans and the concrete measures in order to provide the sanitation of the 23rd territories of the Caribbean coast, adopt the necessary measures to guarantee the return of the displaced families to the communities and guarantee the access to basic services. We also request the commission to include a paragraph regarding the situation of the rights of indigenous and different Afro-descendant peoples in the chapter 4b. It's a uh, annual report regarding Nicaragua and also to establish new recommendations to address the violence in the Caribbean coast, to send a communication to the companies, mining companies and exploitation companies in the area in order 
uh, to remember them or to remind them of their international obligations of human rights, also to prepare and pronounce them immediately together with the UN uh, Office uh, of the High Commissioner of Human Rights, taking into consideration the serious context. Thank you to the representation of the civil society. I will give the floor now to the representative of the state. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members of the commission, uh, members of the petition organizations. Uh, on behalf of the government presided over by Mr. Ortega, we would like to thank this opportunity to present before you the great uh, progress we have made in terms of human rights in relation to uh, indigenous peoples and Afro-descendants persons in the Atlantic coast of the Caribbean. We would like to recognize uh, indigenous peoples, afro descendants persons. We identify their traditions, their culture, and their different ways of organizing themselves. And we also recognize community property in those territories. The, Nicara the state of Nicaragua is trying to implement a set of laws and decrees that strengthen these elements defined under the constitution. For example, the Estatute of the autonomy of the territories in the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua, also the recognition of the autonomous communities in the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua, also the languages of indigenous peoples, and equality treatment law for indigenous communities. And also we have incorporated some aspects that are strengthening the situation of African descendant and indigenous peoples. Also some, everything that has to do with fishing and other uh, rights. We have also uh, approved the autonomy statute in order so that this includes some projects and programs on, in order so that they have their resources available. And we also have a decree to create an institutional committee for the defense of the Mother Earth and the participation of indigenous communities and Afro-descendants persons. Also, Nicaragua has adopted international instruments related to indigenous peoples, for example, the Convention 169 of the ILO regarding indigenous and tribal peoples, also the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of Indigenous Peoples of the UN. We recognize the rights of indigenous peoples. The state of Nicaragua, uh, has shown uh, its uh, duty to comply with the access to justice for all the indigenous peoples in the Nica in Nicaragua's Caribbean. Uh, we are trying to comply with the SDGs in order to transform Nicaragua into a fair and inclusive society for all the sectors of society for the common well-being. This includes inclusion, distribution, participation, empowerment, and activities for those things. Also, we have tried to implement a development plan strategy in the Caribbean. That is an instrument of the national development plan. And we have made a lot of progress there. This instrument was created after the aspirations and dreams of the autonom of the population of the autonomous regions. And we have prepared the laws that are the legal framework of reference for regarding the rights of indigenous and Afro-descendants peoples at a national and international level. And we are preparing a specific guidelines to transform the reality of the Nicaragua's people. In the year, um, they were not taken into consideration. We are trying to develop a coherent strategy that considers indigenous peoples and Afro-descendants peoples. Those are the pillars that are fundamental uh, that, uh, in which our actions in the Caribbean are based. We would like to mention some actions. The restitution of health rights with an intercultural health model that includes the active participation through a community network and the knowledge of the ancestral, ancestral culture of indigenous peoples in terms of health. We would like to guarantee access and coverage of health. Nicaragua has also uh, for, made emphasis on healthcare in the Caribbean coast. And we are following uh, the guidelines or the uh, traditions uh, in terms of health of these peoples. And this includes 
uh, working together with the different units of health. At the same time, we are also trying to guarantee access to free education that is with quality, and we strengthen the, an inclusive education system, taking into consideration the cosmovision of indigenous peoples. And we are also guaranteeing access to all levels of education through a system of education that is autonomous and regional. And one of its uh, access is bilingualism and scientific preparation and humanistic preparation and also we would like to strengthen the language culture of these peoples regarding higher education there are two community universities that have been established in the region and they have uh, set the different agreements with public universities in order to give more opportunity to the young people that are are from the region. We have made a lot of progress in order to improve our communication by uh, building roads and um, other paths for to improve this uh, development of the interior of Nicaragua. We have tried to reduce the gap of access to water. Additionally, this has lead to an advancement regarding the recognition of the territories of indigenous and Afro-descendants peoples. And we have uh, replied to all the petitions made by these communities and the government has restituted the right to 23 territories that include uh, 30,000 families of indigenous peoples. This includes 37 uh, square kilometers of territories, and that represents 31% of the national territory. Uh, with the progress made in the tiling of the property of indigenous persons and peoples, we have uh, limited the indigenous territories, and we have organized and developed actions to guarantee the governance in those territories, the elections in those indigenous territories is through assemblies with the participations of the leaders of the communities in this, those territories with the representation of indigenous governments those were the ones that represented the communities in resolution of conflicts and distribution of land this was done together with institutions of the states and the members of the commission for the demarcation of the territory we has several meetings of mediation of conflict resolution. We also established the uh, demarcation of the territories together with the communities, and we carried out several activities for this. This was a process that moved the leadership of the community of indigenous and Afro-descendants people. For example, the law of demarcation of territories and land says that the government and the state manages the resources and the funds for that. And the government has made sure that those resources are available through budget allocation. We have assigned 50 or allocated 55% of the budget for that. Also, the territorial governments and the state institutions have carried out actions to strengthen the communication mechanisms through uh, regular meetings of coordination and planning with uh, regarding the state intervention in each of the territories, each of the communities. When we are developing programs or projects of or public uh, private partnerships, the territories and the companies and the states work together on the approval processes with the prior and informed consent of the indigenous peoples. That guarantees the full participation of the representatives of indigenous peoples every time that there is a new a school or a new uh, health facility or power a power grid is installed in the community. If the public or private investment does not have the approval of the community, we do not approve any concession or any uh, economic activity on those lands. The NGOs uh, that in the previous and the past uh, represented these communities as for this. One of the challenges that we have again is the 
uh, sanitation stays related to the territories. Uh, each of the communities has a different process and we have different processes for each community. For example, the territory of Carto in the municipality of Puerto Cabezas in the north that includes the city of Pingui has had a rent agreement for those who are descendants of the communities that are part of the territory. That process has been effective for over 100 years and there is no conflict there. The territory of Elami in another municipality has established uh, some uh, security measures in order not for those territories not to be invaded. For example, another uh, municipalities or communities from the other municipalities have established a handbook for the implementation of the process of sanitation that includes several actions to regulate the presence of uh, third parties in their territories. In the case of Guaykimasha, um, uh, they have not established any regulation because they do not have third parties on their territories. Also, there have been actions to strengthen the governance of the territories. For example, uh, some actions carried out in the natural reserves and forests. Everything has been done to eradicate sim industrial mining and illegal mining and open mining. Uh, and this has led to the digitalization of Mexican and Colombian illegal mining projects. In order to avoid impunity of these crimes that affect the indigenous peoples, the system of criminal law has con sentenced 18 cans cases related to conflicts with land in the indigenous communities and related crimes. 22 people have been accused. We have had eight trials and 14 people were found guilty. On the axis to justice, Nicaragua recognizes the indigenous people as a protagonist in the exercise of justice. They have created competitions for the naming of judges, and they were granted to native peoples of the different communities. This is to guarantee that they get to know the region, the language, and their customs and traditions. The Nicaraguan state has been complying with and has informed the uh, provisions uh, issued by the, um, by the commission on on August, November 2016 and 2017, and we evidence that it, we have not incurred in any violation of human rights established in the convention, but it warranties the compliance with the constitutional principles. Thank you very much. Thank you to the state for its intervention. I will give the floor to my colleagues who are here today, Commissioner Julisha Mantilla as first Vice President. Thank you very much, Mrs. President. I have just a few questions. I would like to um, greet the petitioners and the state. And in my capacity of reporter of uh, in migrants, uh, I would like to ask both the representatives of the state and of the civil society their policies for the internal displacement. First, if there are specific policies by the state with an intercultural and uh, gender vision, and whether in those displacements you could identify specific affections for gender reasons for those women or girls ha that have been forced to displace. Then in the case of the online harass harassment, this is for the petitioners. When you post these digital attacks, I would like to know whether you had cases of sexual harassment or sexual threats or cyber harassment as it is called and in the state of in the case of the state in the protocols and laws that have been mentioned i would like to ask whether there is a differentiation vision by gender and whether the there is a, an underscore on threats and sexual violence thanks i'm sorry my computer doesn't work very well sometimes. I would like to like to give the floor to Commissioner Pio Esan, second vice president. 
Thank you, Mrs. President. I would like to read the representations of representatives of the civil society and of the state. And I would like to reinforce the uh, comments of the president, which is really important to have the presence of the state here. I have some questions. The first one is that we have the monitoring mechanism for Nicaragua and the commission is following closely in this context of violence against indigenous people since 2015, as we heard here with detail. So we we have seen attacks in 20 of February and 2020, and we can in, we can have eight cases, eight trials, 14 judgments, but I would like to hear the civil society about the impunity and the state response in this framework of systematic and generalized violence. I am also concerned about the precautionary measures for which 12 indigenous communities were beneficiaries. I would also like to get to know more concrete measures which were adopted by the state and their enforcement. And I would like to know as well about the threats, the threats to those human rights advocates, which are the public policies and the investigation protocols, and which are the measures that the state has taken regarding this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Povison. Com Commissioner Hernandez. Thank you, Mrs. President. I would like to greet the organizations that requested this hearing. Thank you for the trust you have on us so that we can carry out our work. And I would like to greet and I would like to thank the state attorney, Wendy Morales. It's really important to have her here this afternoon. And the, uh, the information she has given is uh, thorough and the commission and the organizations have heard it properly. My colleagues have made very concrete questions and the Commissioner Urrajola will also ask questions. So I won't make much more questions because I would like to hear the second round, the petitioners and the general attorney. But I would like to highlight a topic that is present here in this audience, which in this hearing, which has to do with the rapporteurship of uh, human rights. Uh, what we are seeing here is, and the, it's the reason of the hearing is the impact of colonization in indigenous territories of the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. And what is underlying is the performance of activities, most of them which are extractive activities, independently of the ori origins of the capital, which are um, which are attacking the indigenous territories. And in that regard, the role of the advocates of human rights and social leaders is essential. It is essential, not only in Nicaragua, I must say that, but in the whole region, when where we have these types of threats to defenders of human rights, their role is really important. We have to highlight this and we have to request or make the necessary petition so as to defend the advocates. I think that every people has a right to sustainable development and that we live through a very complex time where the developing countries are carrying out the necessary efforts to uh, for the well-being of their humanity, but we are convinced and the world is convinced that this 
development has to be sustainable. And the first peoples to defend sustainable development are those that lives in the that live in the communities, and those are the leaders, the social leaders, and they are those who, at the end of the day, defend their land, and that is why they are human rights advocates. Do not uh, forget that the concept of human rights advocate, as it had been recognized by the United Nations Assembly is really broad and it includes all the people that are fighting for a uh, human right so it's the right to defend rights so this is where i would like to focus in this obligation that the state has to prevent any attack against the integrity life and work of advocates of human rights. But when we hear those attacks, the obligation to investigate, sanction and reparate the victims. And I would like to stress on that because this is something that uh, has to do with the situation we are examining now. Finally, the underlying reasons of the risk that human rights advocates suffer. This leads us to the title of this audience, the indigenous colonization of this hearing, sorry, the indigenous colonization. I've heard from the general prosecutor, the uh, presentation he has, she has made in the recognition to the indigenous people. And we have also heard within the legal framework which was implemented to protect the indigenous and traditional people. And something that was really important that was mentioned was Convention 169. And this is the second aspect I would like to stress, which is the importance of complying with Convention 169 prior consultation, which must be free and informed or prior and informed consent, depending on the case, is essential to carry out any project that may affect the indigenous territories. If we do not start on or complying with that principle, then we are in a risk situation. We need to um, find the underlying causes and we have to uh, carry out the processes to which Nicaragua has committed to when it subscribed Convention 169. Thank you, Mrs. President. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. Uh, along these lines, I would also like to to comment on the uh, acknowledgement of the rights of uh, indigenous people and the recognition of uh, private property, not only the demarcation and the titling, which is an essential obligation, but also the duty that the states have not to carry out or not to grant concessions for the exploitation of natural resources without consulting first and the is not only linked to the to sanitation, which is something that we have already heard, which is a very urgent need, but also to warranty this need of uh, collective property against third parties and to warranty the enjoyment of uh, collective property, warranty that they can exert this right without pressures, without harassment. And if there are attacks, the state has to investigate those people responsible and to establish efficient mechanisms so as to warranty these rights and to warranty that there are no settlements which are um, which do not belong to indigenous people. And this is an urgent need apart from the sanitation plans that 
is a duty of the state. It also has to uh, avoid the presence of non-indigenous third parties in the properties. And the previous consultation, I would like to reiterate what the organizations have uh, said the sanitation it's not does not only have to do with uh, collective property it's also linked to the right to life of indigenous people and it also has an effect on the access to social cultural rights on what on which the uh, organizations of the civil society have already exposed i have one question in several occasions the civil society organizations have talked about the afro communities i would like to have more information i i know which are the peoples involved in these territories but i would like to understand the situation of the afro communities that are in these territories and the um and the complaints regarding these Afro communities. We've also heard with great concern the investment products, according to the information that the rapporteurship of social and economic rights have given us. We are talking about 60% of the territory, which is which has been granted to uh, mining companies for mining exploitations. Uh, we would like to receive information on which are the concessions and the license that were granted to the companies and whether in general there is any law when the mining licenses are writing, whether you have uh, a specific measures according to the 169 convention, how this operates in practice since Nicaragua has uh, ratified that convention. I would also like to ask, here there are rights to indigenous and Afro-descendant peoples affected one on the one hand by the colonies and on the other hand by the mining companies i understand that there are two different impacts i would like to know which is uh, the impact on each of the the sites and whether uh, so i would like to know this more effectively because it's not the same to talk about colonies or individual people than talking about corporations that have mining license or other type of licenses in, to exploit in the territories and finally the general attorneys talked about 18 cases and the investigation of those 18 cases and the civil society organizations through the monitoring of the Meseni have talked about dozens of cases of murders and kidnapping, so the figures uh, do not match. So my question is how from the uh, attorney's office, how do you face, how do you touch upon these figures, whether you have an office so as to determine how many victims are there in the territories. And by victims, I not, I not only refer to the murder people, but also the those who were kidnapped, uh, uh, attacked or disappeared, there is a clear recognition that there is a violation on the third parties. So I think it's important to talk about the number or the figure of victims. So that is my question. How do we uh, deal with these uh, figures? I would like to give the floor to the acting executive secretary i don't know i don't know don't know whether she wants to take the floor okay no so i will give the floor to the civil society organizations i'm going to check the times whether they can have uh, more time and i would say that you will have 15 minutes and then the state will have 15 minutes as well so as to make the pertinent com comments and to answer the questions that we post. Thank you. Lottie, I don't know if you would like to take the floor first. Thank you very much. Surprisingly, 
we have listened to the state of Nicaragua talking about some cases that have been solved. But for us, that are the representatives of the indigenous communities up to now, we don't have updates regarding the investigations of all the things that we have mentioned. Especially, we have cases of sexual abuse, disappearance, we, or disappear women, murders, and all these cases are, are, have not been uh, solved. They are in, in impunity. And these are cases regarding uh, the conflict with land since 2015. Also, we see force displacement and there are two dynamics. On the one side, the displacements of um, people seeking for a shelter or immediate shelter because of the attacks and the threats that they have suffered by the colonists. Many of the colonists are formal military officers. They are armed and they are uh, driven or they are by the mining activities as the state of Nicaragua has promoted. And they have also promoted and fostered the activities of these private companies in indigenous territories. Also, we see there is an external displacement outside the territories of the communities towards other areas como Cuerpo Cabezas and Guampan, as well as to the territory of Honduras. In, during the very first stage, women, girls, and boys uh, fled from their places in order to survive the attacks. These people have no plan or no destination when they travel to neighboring communities. And because they do not have a destination, they stayed in the mountain. Currently, they suffer of a lot of food insecurity. And the state of Nicaragua knows that the indigenous peoples have fallen waivas. Their houses have been burned and they have been forcibly displaced since 2016. And there has been no reply by the government to the situation of these indigenous people that is uh, sheltering in different neighbor, uh, neighboring communities and also in the main cities of each municipality. Also, we've seen the displacement of other communities in the Kwawao territory and in, in the territory of Wankili Agura. The conditions in which pop, uh, the population live are very poor because they don't have housing, they don't have food, they don't have medicines. All these communities have been visited by us. We visited the, those displays and within the communities that are being attacked, there is no access to medicine. There is also psychological and emotional harm because women and children have suffered from this psychological harm and also they lack the food that they need. And we also would like to warn, to warn the international communi community and the Inter-American Commission because Nicaragua has not carried out concrete actions to stop the forced displacement of these people. And indigenous people, continue to lose their territories and they are not able to carry out their traditional activities such as fishing, hunting, and they cannot farm their own food. I would like to give the floor 
to my colleagues now. Thank you to all those who are here today. There are many things that have been mentioned already, but I would like to uh, focus on some specific, specific things regarding the questions. When there is internal displacement, for example, for example, in the case of women, the families are divided. And, the we, and women are left with a bigger burden than the one they have. And they are unprotected because they don't have a secure house. And there have been cases, for example, after the displacement of some communities in 2015, for example, with the displacement of people from Senilaya, we see that many women are forced to uh, uh, do sexual work in order to be able to buy the food. So those are the things that they have had to go through. I would like to talk about the consequences of the criminalization of human rights defenders. And those consequences are several. There are human rights defenders at the level of the communities. They are historical leaders, committed women and leaders. They want their culture to be kept over time and they are denied of the right to be the leaders of their communities. There are failures in the way that assemblies are carried out. In our community assemblies, the whole community participated. Now, only a group of people are chosen, and these people are conditioned when they go to the assemblies. So if there is a third party that does not know about the situation, they can go to an assembly and they think that everything has been solved. But that people is conditioned because of money offers, because of offers of impunity and all those kinds of situations. That's why we need a deep change in the way that these authorities are elected. There is another situation, for example, a human rights defender is chosen as an authority, then the certification requested by the committee is denied because those are people who do not belong to the government and many of those elected in our communities are members of the, gov of the government's party. And that has divided the communities. It has created many conflicts in our communities. Regarding the mining situation, there are general considerations that we should make. For example, the pollution of rivers. And we use those rivers for water consumption to wash our clothes, and also for fishing. And they are getting polluted and we don't know which the long-term impacts will be in the, on the lives of the community. We don't know the consequences and people are stopping drinking uh, water from the river. We still wash our clothes there, but those pollutants become part of the food chain and those pollutants will be in the fish that we fish. And that is a real situation, for example, in this situation or in the region of the Vengo River, uh, there is a situation there where there is a mining area. And there have been some conflicts there because the colonies are imposing their rules to the communities that go there to work. And that is with the support of authorities in, those, in that region. And the government says that everything is becoming political because the petition for those colonies to leave has to do with an influence of the indigenous party. But people are very angry with that situation because these colonies are treating the communities as if they were the owners of the territories. And that situation has also created conflicts within the communities. There have been some uh, roles and people that ended up being uh, injured. And sometimes these roles occur between uh, indigenous peoples and also the groups. And the conflicts there are not with the colonists, but also within the internal groups within the communities, because there is a minority that is in favor of the colonists. And so we have a very difficult situation there. 
And regarding the case, it's about we been working for 12 years fighting against those invasions or colonization. In 2014, we uh, rescued 60 families. And in 2014, the regional government decided to uh, demarcate or to limit the territory. We were able to reach one of the limits, but there was a group of people that stopped us from checking the rest of the demarcation of the territory. And we have an imposed and a legitimate precedent for in the demarcation system because we have denounced them because they promote the approaches that are taking place there. So we requested a change of the authorities, but they are still there. We also have reported and have presented complaints regarding the president of the territory and also the colonies, the colonies that I mentioned before. But our report or our complaint was rejected. It's very difficult to listen uh, to some of the things that were said. I remember that at the time, uh, a judicial official told me that uh, there was no place for those types of cases and that they couldn't accept my case. But so they do not accept or admit your complaint. But there is a process to stop communities from reacting. And I think that there are many other things, but we kind of continue talking because of uh, time restraints. Thank you very much. Maria Luza, would you like to add something? Yes, please. The problem of decolonization occurs along the Caribbean coast and it is affecting Afro descendants and indigenous communities. However, the situation of Wasaguas and of the Wanki and Coco River region, that is Miskitu and Mayana peoples, that is a worse situation because you have armed groups and those are the ones that are controlling and attacking systematically the communities since 2015. We know that there were attacks in the past, but that is the situation. But the situation along the coast is attacking and they try to extend the farming border. They want to promote cattle raising and also mining activities. We also had a situation in the Ramal and Creole region. We have three uh, indigenous people communities and three Afro-descendants communities. And I think that also in Brookfield, we had a black community and they created a parallel government and therefore their demarcation process was stopped and the government granted 77% of the territory and therefore 90 Three percent of the territory was left for the companies or for private public partnerships, and that represents the most important black community of. And that is a case that the commission is dealing with. It's on its merits stage, and it's because of the lack of prior and informed consent, and this was uh, widely documented and recorded because there was no prior consent. So the Miss, uh, Mrs. or Madam Prosecutor, you can see all those documents, they are in the foreign ministry regarding these violations that have been fully documented. We also have a, the protocol, the protocol of investigation and protection of human rights defenders that is established by the Inter-American Court so that Nicaragua enforces it after the ruling Costa et al against Nicaragua. But the state decided to not to apply that protocol. And we need that protocol for human rights defenders in Nicaragua because we are permanently attacked. We hope that the state complies with the ruling of the court and together with organizations, I hope that they carry out the protocol. And 
the madam prosecutor talk about the case Masao against Agustinia, but they have they have been presented for 10 years a lot of complaints because of police actions and their territory 90% of its territory has been invaded by colonists and that includes the area that they use for hunting, there are two families that live in the area for hunting. We have non-indigenous third parties living there. We can send you that document, those documents, because they have prepared a lot of documents. Thank you very much. We are almost. Uh running out of time. I don't know if somebody wants to say anything else. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for asking the question. Uh, in addition to mining concessions, which have expanded with states' complicity, uh, without the necessary consultation and consent processes, mining companies also work with small-scale miners to explore gold, which is luring colonos, resulting in violence against the indigenous communities. The mining companies also mill gold ore from colonos. There's concrete evidence from the Ramakreo territory, and there are no known controls on the purchase of gold ore at mills elsewhere in the country. So there are linkages between the colonization by extractive gold mining industry, as well as violence from the colonos. I would like to refer quickly to the question the Commissioner Julissa asked about the digital attacks. The protection that the Commission has granted, we identified, we haven't identified a cyber attack pattern, but there have been attacks and we can uh, pass on to you the relevant information that we have and keep on to communicate on those channels. Thank you, Guillermo. I would like to see the time that the state has. I think it's uh they have 18 minutes so they can use that amount of time thank you thank you for the comments for the suggestions i have written them down and i'm going to proceed to answer to them I would like to first thank you for the invitation as to this topic. I've heard that there are other topics that have come to light and it's, uh, I understand your concern, but I would like to say the commissioner whether we can focus on the impacts of uh, of the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua as it belongs to this session. I would uh, I wrote down the initial interventions made by these civil society organizations. I share your point of view when you spoke about the human rights to all Nicaraguan people, and I do not have any vision that there can be partial human rights and that the human rights should be um, are applicable to all Nicaraguan, whether they are third parties, whether they are indigenous peoples, colonists, whether whatever you can call them, they are Nicaraguan, they have human rights and they have the obligation to have their human rights respected. And I would like to stress on this aspect because sometimes we tend to think that human rights are for one part of the population and not for the other. And it's important that the state, the, for the state to warranty the exercise of human rights for all. As to the sanitation, I would like to talk briefly because those were one of the first topics you mentioned. I would like to mention to lay 445, section 536 and 36. 
whether where there are actual actions against four circumstances or third people against indigenous communities that have been that have to be complied with during the process before talking about those circumstances i would like to mention this because we need to respect the norm and the law and the state cannot deviate from the compliance with the laws which are which should be known and uh, complied with by all the communities so the circumstances that must be observed belong to the historical respect that we have respected it. We, in, we included two more territories with informed and prior consent. So we have 25 original territories. So the property rights have to be, have, conver have to converge within the sanitation and they belong to the historical occupation of the ethnic communities which have not possessed it and in 1989 are aimed to post it. And they possess that land that has the right to keep on and they have to make an improvement for the community. So what has to do with the original land has to known and validated by all the governments or by the governments and the boards of each of the municipalities which the law establishes and the communities should be prioritized. It also mentions the territories, the third parties without titles. Some of them have to abandon them. I mean, if they want to keep on those lands, they have to have a permission by the community. So I would like to comment on some actions for the sanitation, for instance, in June 2012, we created the forum for the sanitation of indigenous and Afro-descendant peoples of the Caribbean coast with the participation of the different authorities and they expressed their willingness to uh, start the sanitation stage. It was the willingness of the state to carry out the sanitation and it is already written down in the report. And we'd also established that facing certain invasion of lands and in the reserve of Yokra Usawas where we have judge and registers, we uh, complained uh, against the, the court and we also opened an investigation process against the lawyers and the general prosecution office of the nation reported and five of them were not lawyers and some of them did not have knowledge on the laws of the republic and the Council imposed disciplinary sanctions to eight lawyers and suspended three of them from the exercise of their office and one of them suspended for one year. And that is why we established that this sanitation process, which was based on a dialogue model, and in these endeavors, I would like to talk about the actions that have been carried out so as to warranty the exercise of the property and the recognition of the titles before 1987 and to accelerate the judicial complaints from third parties. And somebody was mentioned the uh, settlements. We establish the settlement before any proceeding and it's part of any proceeding uh, as to our civil and criminal law this can be done for the warranties of the involved parties we don't accept that they will say that we have a discussion or conflicts against the parties when the law establishes that this is a prior proceeding and this ca cannot be held as irregular. There has to be a settlement first, there has to be a mediation, and that is what the human rights of the parties is about. They have to have the opportunity to express and to try to get to an agreement. So. I would like to specify that about the mediation and as to the sanitation and the measures carried out for the uh, communal lands with greater extensions that has been designed by the Conadet. 
we have 12 territories that have uh, made progress in the sanitation when they say that the state has not seen has not followed up we established a sanitation protocol uh, in samantuka ya samantua wapausa wanquiti stavarraya tuaca pinsoaulia pinsoala y carata we establish a, a protocol for the protection of Afro-descendant and indigenous people at Wangin Wakai, which was signed in 2012, and the decree which has to do with the, the Commission of the Mother Earth and the 445 law. And we also established the protocols approved by the Conadeti and the law ordering indigenous and Afro-descendants people, which are the beneficiaries of uh, the territories, have greater problems with third parties. As to the judicial guarantees, I would like to say something quite quickly because the time is running up. Commissions have been established where the police participates, the public ministry, uh, where the, uh, the reports that have been made and the knowledge of the rights that go to the authorities, the reports that, uh, that are issued are reported to the victims as part of the right that they have to be adequately informed. Even though it's true that there is great concern due to the different interventions we have had here, we need to underscore the representation that there should be of each of the persons involved in each of the proceedings. The state informs on the victims of each of the uh, proceedings that we've mentioned and it informs us to the original territories to their governments that it has been established according to the law. We have made no exception as to get to know each of the proceedings, but we follow the norms. I would like to know whether you have an opinion for for the state to evade norms when you establish that the state should comply with them. We established poli police delegations which have coordination with e which each of the local governments and regional governments and we keep on working in the strengthening of the uh, monitoring plans for the maintenance of the public order and the prevention of crimes and any other kinds of violence. We also carry out meetings and assemblies with all the organizations with the coordination of preventive actions and the Nicaragua Army keeps on executing the normalization plans with uh, third parties and we keep on carrying out coordinated actions of uh, education and capture of goods that affect to protective areas, warranting that the wood coming from the uh, lands is applied correctly according to the forestry lands in our country. We also coordinated with Marena. I have also mentioned that in my report. And we kept on we kept on preventing the legal traffic of the communal lands. It has been the main task on the part of the state and especially on the public prosecution of the Republic facing any threat that injures the right of the communities, the state and all the factors I have mentioned, we can exert the reparation actions for the exercise of the communities. We have supported the territorial communities and we asked for them to grant information for the uh, proceedings or the judicialization of certain cost cases. Even though it is true, as you were mentioned, what is happening with the South? We have to pay attention to the uh, regions of the South, those that are not indigenous communities with the legalization of their uh, lands. So the integral station has to be given to the 
uh, indigenous, we have to come to monitor the whole spectrum of the use of the lands in the whole territory. I would also like to share that in 2019, after some cases of violence, we established that they were related with uh, regular crimes. The security the field has been reestablished and we got to know and process and condemn cases as I was commenting on the report and even though it is true they are not as you mentioned they are not linked to what was informed by the Nicaraguan state we would like to get to know what is it that you report as to the indexes that you manage so as to be able to present a serious report on behalf of the state so that we can specify what we what you have commented not only on these types of situations but in many others comments that i have heard and i will mention or i will give my answer and this is expressed in a general way and it is easy it is difficult for the state to identify an answer in the way we would like to answer there is surprise about the data on the accusations with the information that you provide us. We would like to specify them so as to convey them through these means. But as we said, it has been done through the victims. We also mentioned the vulnerability in certain areas. It is important to mention that it's a policy in the institute, uh, farming institute, as to a protocol of traceability of the cattle. You may not know some of the actions that the state uh, perform, and the state is willing to give you that information so as to have feedback and so as to specify each of the concerns that we have. And so through the IPSA, we could uh, give some more data. You also commented on the access to natural resources and the non-disposition of certain communities for their natural resources. I would like to comment on this report that uh, this article that was published in the media, in the press, where it establishes that the exporters want the licenses from Enaforta and they complain for the Enaforta to get the licenses. So this is a contradiction. If you say that the state is facilitating the export of natural resources, we would like to know uh why you say so because this does not match the reality you can observe this and you can also see in the report in the article which speaks about the Mangyang uh, communities and that the companies signed a com uh, an agreement to get to use the lands and MR for forestal is there is prior consent. It's not said by the state, but it's said by the uh, by this newspaper. It, they are also mentioned that there are no concrete policies to avoid the forced displacements. I also mentioned the regular monitoring, and I would also like to share that there are no double territorial governments. You can validate them with the same territorial governments as to their representation. And if there is a double representation governments, we would like to know which are those parallel governments that you mentioned. Also, Mr. Ocampo was mentioning the precautionary measures. We have a notif a notice that was sent to him on August 21, 2018, when the commission notified us as to the um, precautionary measures. It was done by Margarita Dixon, who is identified as, as her sister, and we notified the notification so as to appear 
on the state so as to comply with the mandate of the commission and up to the moment the Mr. Ocampo has not come to our office. We do not know where he lives at that time. This has his sister said that he was in Europe. I do not have that information right now, but I would like to say I would like to get to know him so as to see whether the information he was telling us about the communities on the north when he was talking about the prostitution and the displacements i would like to um i would like to know how that information is obtained so that the state can answer efficiently to this commission Regarding the displacement policies and the gender uh, policies that I mentioned, I think that I have explained the actions of the Nicaraguan states regarding gender identity. We uh, occupy the fifth place uh, regarding gender perspective because there are several public studies that show uh, this, and I hope that I have been able to answer to all the questions. So we are at your disposal to share with you the information that is requested through this uh, meeting. And if you would like to make other questions, we will be here to answer them. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, thank you to the representative of the state. I would like uh, to say that. There are two things that are pending, and I think these are the central goal of this hearing. First, we are talking about the impact of colonization on indigenous territories. I provided you with the statistics that I received from the special rapporteur in economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights regarding the mining operations in the territory. Maybe the state should send us information regarding the mining concessions that have been granted and how many are being processed right now in those territories. And also we would like to know the uh, processes of prior and informed uh, consultation because I'm not sure about the proceeding or the procedure regarding the consultation processes if there are there is an administrative or a law for that we need to know the legal system for that and we would like to know the concessions that have been granted or that in the process of being granted so if you could send that information it would be very important uh, for us uh, regarding the organization or regarding what has been said, I think that uh, the civil society organizations should be able, if possible, send us and send the uh, attorney the number of uh, complaints that you have. The, uh, the prosecutor mentioned uh, 18 cases, and you have mentioned other cases, so it would be good to have the figures of civil society organizations so that the state can report on those uh, complaints in detail. I would like also to invite the organizations and the state to start a conversation on the reports, on the complaints. Um, it is a reality that civil society organizations and states have different figures regarding the number of complaints. What's important is to start to discuss what is happening regarding the figures. We need to agree on the number of victims that there, that there are, and we need to make progress on solutions for that. So we would like all of you to share the information that you have and to advance on the investigation that uh, regarding the violent that violence that exists in the territory. After this, I hope that I have been able to represent my colleagues. Uh, we are running out of time, so we will complete this hearing. We will finish this hearing. I would like to thank all the civil society organizations for the information that they provided. I would like also to re thank the representation of the state. Please, pr uh, prosecutor, please. We would like to have the information regarding mining concessions. We would like to have that information to have more information and clear information uh, regarding uh, 
what you're saying, we have the information regarding press, but we need to have formal information regarding how many concessions have been granted, because this is a permanent complaint that we receive from civil society organizations. Thank you to everybody, and we hope that you have a nice afternoon and we stay in touch. Thank you very much and goodbye.